Well, everybody, this is my version of a uh, three-axis gimbal or a steady cam that you can use for a GoPro type action cam. You can manually position it, um, or just by moving it around, uh, it keeps your camera uh, pretty steady and keeps it uh, pointed at your subject. So first off, you're going to need some inline skate wheels. And the inline skate wheels have a set of ball bearings inside. There are actually two sets of ball bearings inside. Now since my inline skating days are gone, I took these off and uh, had them lying around and used them. And what you need to do is you need to cut the center portion out. And in this center portion, there's a plastic housing that goes up around the ball bearings. So you can use a small coping saw, cut out the center portion, and then you'll, uh, when you're done, it'll look like this. And you'll actually have a set of ball bearings, and there's actually gonna be two ball bearings, and they're gonna be in a plastic housing. Uh, this plastic housing actually will be as wide as both sets of ball bearings. So what you're going to have to do afterwards after you cut this out, you're going to take your saw and cut this plastic housing, you can see, cut this plastic housing right down the middle. And then that way you'll end up with two separate sets of ball bearings that looks just like this, okay, and there'll be two separate ones. That's where you get your ball bearings and this plastic housing on the outside here, this will need to be cleaned up a little bit, use a Dremel tool. Um, and it fits almost perfectly inside of the PVC fitting. You have to also grind out or uh, sandpaper off the inside of the PVC a little bit. And then, uh, and always make sure you are always checking your work. Make sure that you're checking that this fits. Um, if you sand out or grind out too much, then this will be too loose and it'll just fall through. And that, you don't want that to happen. So always check, grind a little bit, check, grind a little bit, check the fit, okay? Now that you have the ball bearings cut out, what you're gonna to wanna to do is grab yourself some one inch PVC T fittings or three-way fittings. Uh, you're gonna need four of them. Well, you're actually gonna need three. And if you wanna put on the bottom of the handle an extra one, I've got that so my hand doesn't slip off the bottom of this handle. Uh, you'll actually then need four sets of one inch PVC fittings. Uh, and they'll be T fittings or three-way fittings. Uh, it's one inch inside diameter okay which we'll need to do with those and these fittings i'll show you on the on the uh act three axis steady cam um what you're going to need to do is you're going to have one fitting gonna, is going to stay complete and this is going to be your fitting that you're going to hang on the joist hanger or your camera mount okay and this is one complete pvc fitting then you're going to go ahead and take another PVC fitting and you're going to cut off an end here. Just this one end. And you'll do that with the third PVC fitting is cut off this end here. You don't want to cut off the bottom part. You need to just cut off an end. And what that does, and once you cut it off, you know, use, your, use your coping saw or a regular saw or whatever uh, you have handy. Uh, go ahead and cut that off. And what that allows is, uh, allows you to have an access point to the bolts and to the ball bearings inside so that you can uh, tighten everything up. Uh, without having that, you're not gonna be able to get in there and tighten anything up. You can also use, instead of the T fittings, you can use an elbow fitting, a one inch elbow fitting but if you use a one inch elbow fitting, you're gonna have to drill some type of access hole onto the side here uh, so that you can get inside from the, you know, from the back so you can tighten up the bolts and tighten up the nuts. Uh, I prefer using just the T fitting, cut it off, and it's a lot easier because the access hole is big enough. You can get any type of wrench you need in there, uh, socket, extension, whatever. So then you take one T fitting and your three-quarter inch wood bit and you go ahead and drill on the bottom of the T-fitting through 
and that way you'll have an access hole or an access point to attach this T fitting to this modified T fitting here. Okay, after you've done that, then you want to take your second and third T fittings and cut off this end right here. It's a nice clean cut. Sand it up, clean it up. You need to do that with fitting number two and fitting number three. Cut it off so that you have a 90 degree or an elbow fitting. And with your fourth and final fitting, you're, you're going to have to do nothing. Um, this fitting is going to be placed at the bottom of your handle and it's really optional. Okay, once the fittings are done, what you're going to want to do is go ahead and grab yourself a joist hanger. And uh, I've got one that fits a 2x4. My camera, I believe, is a little bit smaller than a standard GoPro or the new uh, Hero 4. Uh, so you might have to use a little bit larger joist hanger. Mine is a standard, uh, standard for a 2x4. It's 2 inches, uh, about 2.5 inches wide. Three inches deep and four inches tall. My camera fits nice and snug, and you know it's really good inside that. So I was, I was lucky. Like you said, like I said, uh, if your camera's larger, then you know you might have to use one for a four by four, something that's four inches wide. Uh, what I've done is I've removed these little side wings. I've cut. A semicircle or a half circle here in the middle, as you can see here. I've drilled another hole out so that the camera sits a little bit further back into the frame, and that way it gives it a better uh, a better center of gravity and makes everything just a little bit lighter. What I've done is cut out a little piece here, that way I can get to my fastening wheel or my tightening wheel. And I just used the leftover wheel from my uh, from my inline skate and put a larger washer on it. Used a quarter inch nut, a quarter inch bolt with two quarter inch nuts in here to uh, lock each other down. And then I got this uh, fastening or this tightening wheel off of an old uh, tripod. And that way I can mount the camera in. So it's nice and tight. Oops. Have the camera mounted, everything's tightened down. And I can use this wheel to pan by hand, or to pivot, or to use basically as a little counterweight on the bottom, so it gives it a little extra weight. So on the first complete T-fitting, you're going to have to sand out a little bit on all three of the holes here so that the ball bearing and housing fit in snug. Now, like I said, check your work before you uh, go crazy and grind it all the way down and this falls through. Make sure you grind a little, check fitting. Grind a little, check fitting. Once you have that so that all three sides fit snugly and you're gonna need three sets of ball bearings, once that's all done, then what you wanna do is take some PVC glue, smear a little bit on the inside of each of your holes here, smear a little bit on the outside housing of your ball bearing, take one of your bolts, your quarter inch by about one and a half inch bolts, place a washer on it, slip the bolt into the ball bearing first. Because once you push this in, you're not going to be able to get the ball bearings anywhere once you have all three sides sealed. You won't be able to get the bolt in once you have all three sides sealed. Even though that you have an access hole drilled out here, it's too small to get a longer uh, bolt in. So make sure you have your bolt, 
with your washer and your ball bearing. It's all smeared with your PVC glue. This is smeared with PVC glue. Insert one here, press it so that you have a nice flush fitting. Insert another one on this side, same thing, nice flush fitting. And insert one in here so that you have a nice flush fitting. So then you get your number two fitting. And like I said, you've already modified it. You've cut off this end so you have access. It'll look just like this fitting right here. It's gonna look just like an elbow fitting with a nice large access hole. And you're going to place, same thing, quarter inch by one and a half inch bolt with washer in this side. And you wanna place one here on the, this side. So you have this one and this one, and this will be your access point here. And if you notice on mine, I've got a little bit of a spacer here in between my number two and my number three fitting. Uh, what that spacer is, is actually the end of one of these T fittings that I've cut off and cleaned it up at nice parallel sides. And I put it in there just so that I have a little more room between my camera and my handle, okay? That way you have a little more room in between here um, it's not really necessary, but you know, I like it. I got fat knuckles, so you know, if you have a bigger hand or whatever, you, you may want to go ahead and put that little spacer in there. So now we have our number three modified T, or modified T fitting to be, uh, it'll look like a 90 degree once it's done, like we've done with the other one. Cut that end off. And we have our third and final fitting that we'll be placing ball bearings in and we're only going to place it in one side because this bottom part portion is going to be the uh, the part where you mount your handle into the bottom so you'll only need to put a ball bearing in one side of the teeth fitting right here where it joins the number two and number three fitting together okay now that we have all the fittings are all dried with all the ball bearings inserted. What we need to do is just join them together. Uh, what we want, um, we'll have our first T fitting here, our full T fitting with our ball bearings on each end and the one on the on this portion here. And we'll just slide it. And we already have our bolts that were inserted when we when we inserted the ball bearings. Okay. Now what I've done is slid into my joist hanger and I've placed a regular flat washer, a lock washer, and one of the self-locking nuts with the nylon insert. Okay, I put it on both sides and that's it. I don't have a washer um, in between. You can put a washer in between the joist hanger and the and the PVC fitting or the ball bearing, but I didn't. I want this a little bit snug here uh, so I don't have as much swinging movement. It's, it's a little bit snug. It's nice and smooth, but it doesn't swing. I, I've tried it uh, uh, before with a washer in between and with a nut in between, and it, this was swaying too much. It, it was too loose, so now it moves without it actually swaying back and forth. So go ahead and mount mount that and then you have that set in there. And uh, if it if it does it for you, if it sways too much or swings too much, you could tighten up a little bit or, or squeeze the, the ends a little bit just so that you have a little bit of friction on the on the pipe. Okay so we're going to go ahead and put the number two joint or the number two fitting and we're going to join that to the number one T fitting here. Now the number two fitting also has a ball bearing here and the number one fitting has the ball bearing here and the number one fitting already has its bolt in it and if you forgot to do that that's not a problem because you can access it through the slot here that we made okay so we can get a better look at that. 
Okay, there's your bolt. And you can just slot, uh, slide that right in there. Then with this, I put the same thing. I put the bolt, I've got a washer, slid it through, and on the other end, I've got a washer, a locking washer, I've got a regular nut, and I also have a self-locking nut on it because I don't want, once I get this all fastened, I don't want anything coming apart while I'm in the middle of filming. So as you can see, inside, we went ahead and fastened it same way with a nut and a self-locking nut. And I've done that on every one of the joints. Same thing here. You'll have, you'll you can slide your bolt in from this side. Same thing, bolt, washer, goes through the ball bearing, goes through the second ball bearing, comes out, and on this end, same thing, washer, locking washer, regular nut, and self-locking nut. And that basically is your three-way access. You tilt forward, left, right, and sideways, left, right. Once you have that done, you can go ahead, slide your handle in. Uh, I made my handle, like I said, about 12 inches. That, that's a comfortable length for me. And through this final T fitting on the bottom. Now, once you have everything in, and you need to tighten it down, that's where the offset box end wrench comes in handy. Because we have a large enough access point here to where we can go ahead and slide that right in, and that fits perfect over each one of the bolts and nuts that we have to fasten. And you would go ahead and slide that in, fasten, take your socket, and tighten it up. That's why we had to drill an access point here. And that's why we also cut off the ends of the T fittings. So we have a large enough access here for your socket and a large enough access here for your offset box end wrench. Okay, that fits in and click, it's right on it and everything stays nice and snug. So, that's my setup. If you have any other ideas or any way to improve on it, go for it. It seems to be working fine for me. Um, nothing's come loose, everything seems to be working okay. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and give her, or give her a workout. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope it helped you a little bit. And like I said, this is a stepping stone. I took these ideas from other videos I've seen and other um, access, uh, three axis uh, gimbals or steady cams or a hybrid steady gimbal, I guess. <laughs> um, and I took their ideas and put it into an idea that I think uh, is a little handier, a little more flexible and a little steadier. Feel free to improve on it, and uh, if you come up with a better idea, shoot me an email or shoot me a uh, uh, YouTube. I'd like to see it. All right, hope you enjoy it, and happy filming.